claim that I was to punch you. Just other people seeing it? Sure, hearsay. Now, hearsay isn't admissible in court, but once you actually become, you know, once you actually get into an argument or a controversy and you are, are subject to, you know, the judge and his jurisdiction, it doesn't matter anymore. He will decide whether I punched you or not. If I didn't punch you and I went to jail, it would be a misjustice, right? So say an injustice. Was, so just say this instance there was a policeman at the door, he punched me. Yeah. He just grabbed you, chucked in the back of the paddy wagon, to sure. took you straight to the... Yeah. Well, so you would put these things into practice in law the next day or something when you're in mm. court. Sure. Well, he'd Even probably take me in the, and the lock me up. the policeman was a, a witness and he saw everything, you could still do what you're saying in court. Yeah, well, to, for, for a witness to even be heard, there'd have to be a court case, and there wouldn't be a court case if there was no jurisdiction. Okay, so, you know, again, when you went in, even if you went into the court, uh, you know, if the judge couldn't get jurisdiction over you, they wouldn't, that would get thrown out. Yeah, because it's all hearsay. And you've put this into practice? Yeah. On what? A, 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 number, a number of, yeah, more than one occasion and in more than one situation. Yeah. So I actually had to, they tried to get me to go to court for a long time for traffic, what they called traffic violations. And um, every time I challenged the police and challenged the courts, and every time I won, because there was no proof of claim. They were saying that I was speeding, and I remember when, when the pirate came up to me, you know, when the pirate first tried to board my vessel, and, you know, said, uh, you're, you were speeding, and I, I asked him, I said, was I? And what would, what would you say? You know, most of us go, oh, I'm sorry, bang. We enter the argument, we enter the controversy. But I don't, I, I actually take away the presumption. Okay. Oh, was I? So it comes back to him to prove that I was. Well, look at my black box and he, you know, he shows me this thing and I say to him, well, that's, a, that's a nice box you've got there. Because he, again, he's trying to get me to agree, he's trying to get me to enter that controversy. And so in the end, you know, he, he starts to write out stuff, well, give me your name. And I said to him, well, I'll give you my name upon proof of claim that there's controversy here. And he said, well, did you know that I can just take you and lock you up? And I said to him, yeah, well, that's called force, okay? Or a threat. Or a threat, okay? And that's what pirates do. And uh, all of you have kind of like grown up in the, in the era of electronica, so I mean, a lot of you would, would know Laurie Anderson you know, in the 80s she had a song called Oh Superman and there's a great line in that which says when justice is gone there's, a, there's always force and that's true because if, if I feared anything which I try not to fear anything because fear is obviously an attractor for, for bad stuff so if I feared anything it would be force because you know I fear ignorance because every time I've sort of been in a situation where I've had to be approached by these law pirates, um, they don't understand what I do because they're not taught that and they're not taught it for a reason. Or if they are taught, they've forgotten it or they're not allowed to talk about it. But essentially, they have their set of rules because they're policing the, um, the person, the fiction, the corporation. Okay, they're, they're doing their job, which is part of the matrix. And they're, they're coming and trying to intrude upon my private journeying in peace or my private affairs which they have no jurisdiction or no place to be in okay so that's the only thing that would scare me is force because in, in all other senses it's illegal to do, to do that for them to do that mm -hmm. they, they have no right in my private automobile to pull me over to stop me to find me to do anything I mean if they said to me uh, you weren't wearing a seat, but I would say, well, you show me the injured party. You know, there's um, there's a, there's a myriad of laws and things that, mm. that we we kind of. So you have to have done something wrong for them to be able to pull you over. In their law, yeah. So all laws refer to corporations. Right. Yeah. So if you were drunk and you'd run someone down. Well, that, if I'd run somebody down, I'd most likely run down uh, an entity. And so I would be liable for the entity unless um, I was the agent for my all caps. Because you see, you can only bring uh, a court case or a, 
a claim against an entity. It will never, ever, ever come against a natural flesh and blood person. All claims, all um, insurance, for example, all of those things. You know, and if it even came down to it, if we were in a courtroom and I had given up my rights and the judge said, okay, I'm going to order you to pay uh, $1 million damage to this person for running them down or whatever the hell happened, and I could say to the judge, well, I, I shall pay, Your Honor, upon proof of claim that there is any lawful money in circulation backed by anything of value. Because there is no money to pay with. Right. So we, we all come back to this fictitious land again. It's an interesting, interesting kind of system. Mm. So that's the basic, that's the basis of the straw man and who all of you are. I used to be too. What I had to do is I had to go through all of my cards, all of my accounts, my uh, my credit cards, threw those away, cancelled everything, threw away my license, realized I didn't need a driver's license because I don't drive anymore. I don't put into motion a commercial vehicle anymore. I simply journey. So. I registered um, and had my own private plates for my automobile. And, and anything that, that I had to actually do business with or use my transmitting utility, my straw man, say if I wanted to get an, an account with electricity or a telephone or something like that, right? You need a transmitting utility. And the same with the bank. You have a bank account. They're not going to give you a bank account in your natural flesh and blood name. Okay. So you need your transmitting utility, but you still have to be the agent for it. But I made sure that, that every time I did, I took away the mister because a fiction, a legal fiction is not gender based. And I always made sure that the TM, the trademark, went on the end of it. And so I slowly, bit by bit, reassembled all of my cards. And when I came time to get a new port pass, I made sure that I put the all rights reserved you know, agent uh, signature on there. And they weren't going to give that to me. It took me an hour of, of talking to convince these people that that, that, that was my signature. <laughs> I, I'm surprised that it literally didn't take you years. Yeah, well, it, you know, I was in there for a couple of hours organizing the passport, and when it came time for them to actually accept my signature, that's what took an hour. For, mm -hmm. Where they say, sign here, and I signed. And that's when the trouble started. <laughs> so, and what were they saying to you? Uh, you can't do that. You can't sign like that. Uh, then they actually went out and researched my, my past passport from years ago and said, you know, you didn't sign like that before. So I actually had to say to them, whose signature is it? You know, it's my signature. I sign how I want. Who tells you or the government who you are? You know. So they asked me for, uh, in the end, they asked me for a proof that, I, uh, you know, I signed my name like that, and so I, I was able to pull out other documents or other things which I'd gotten beforehand, which are much easier to get, like your uh, library card or something else. And I said, "Look, that's how I sign my name. I'm the authorized agent for the legal fiction that happens to look like my name." And so they gave it to me. A very, very unique um, situation to be in, especially now because Japan has started to bring in fingerprinting. Mm -hmm. And they're bringing in fingerprinting in America. in America to completely enjoin you with the straw man, okay? Because when you go and, you know, they take your photo, they put the fingerprints on there, it runs through the machine, and up comes the all capital letter, Mr. Blah, 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 blah. That's you. you so are, what happens in Australia when that comes in in your, in your case? Well, I'm still the agent. So it can have, that's my photo, and that's my signature, but that's... A piece of IP that I own. Yeah, but will it still have your photo, your fingerprint, and that signature? Sure, as as the mm -hmm. agent, as the agent for 